Because we are the champions of inclusion. Is that time to talk about inclusion? Yeah, let's do it. Ah, there he is. Hey, Josh. Hey, guys. How's it going? Good, good. Hello, Josh. It's been a while since the last hey. time I've seen you. Hey, Nelly. How's it going? I think it's been going a while. Since good. So, so um, Josh, we're going to go ahead and start with uh, some introductory questions. These are just get to know you type questions, and we'll we'll answer them too. Uh, so, so you get to know us a little bit as we're asking the questions. Okay, mm -hmm. Joshua. So we're going to be talking about him later when you were when you were doing the Super Bowl. But what is your favorite weekend song? <laughs> The weekend song, um, I I guess I'll have to go with two. The first one will always be "Blinding Lights," and I think the other one will have to be "Save Your Tears." Oh my gosh, that's funny because my mine and my best friend's favorite song from him is also "Blinding Lights." <laughs> yeah, that's the biggest song that he's ever done, though. I feel like that's his biggest song from his album. Yeah, yeah. um, I. Definitely love that song too. <laughs> and uh, Nat and uh, her partner Katie are in um, uh, one of the special Olympics events that we host here is uh, dance. And oh yeah, Nat, yeah. So Nat's been able to to do some dance. We ha I don't think that we've done the weekend yet, but uh, there yeah, yeah there, there are a lot of songs on the list, and Natalie and and Katie both really um, I think get into to the weekend. <laughs> We do. <laughs> yeah, the, I grew up with the weekend in high school. I think I so saw I started freshman year in 2012, freshman year. I think that's why I started. I think that's when he just started coming out too at the same time. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's uh, that's that's actually cool. That's good. Um, for um for the next question now, do you wanna do you wanna ask? The... Uh, okay, I guess this one is a little fun. I guess, um, if you could only eat one brand of ice cream, which uh brand would you want to eat <laughs> like like from a brand or like flavor or yeah brand? um well, either and yeah either. we'll start with brands so you have a whole range of flavors but um yeah it has, be, it has to be your favorite that's a tough one but um either between blue bell or ben and jerry's i mean i remember blue bell did have an issue before with their ice cream from way back i don't know if you guys remember yeah so I'll have to go with Ben and Jerry's because there's never no issues out of them. Yeah. Uh, we absolutely love Ben and Jerry's too. And I definitely love their mint chocolate chip. That's my favorite too. I also, oh. I also like Crispy. I also like, um, what's that place? Oh, they sponsor Best Buddies. What's it called? Oh, oh, um, Cold Stone. Cold Stone, yes. Yeah, I like yeah. Cold Stone. Yeah. I definitely love Cold Stone too. <laughs> That's cool. I used to be um, heavy into Klondike because they had the Choco Taco. That was my absolute favorite, and I would have. That's said, my dad's favorite. Really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that's cool. Um, but uh, they stopped making them, so so I can't I can't say Klondike anymore. Uh, I probably there's a there's a brand called Magnum that um, makes uh, like dipped um, ice creams. So they're just like little ice cream bars on sticks. And um, those are really good because they're small and I can finish one without feeling guilty. Oh, I like oh yeah, our before. family friend, well, one of our family friends from New York that I was talking about earlier, he actually used to work at a Ben & Jerry's. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just like Ben & Jerry's. My favorite flavor from there, it, besides mint chocolate chip, would have to be like Oreo. I'm a fan of Oreo, yeah. cookies and ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. Awesome. So another one is if you just had one wish that could be granted, what would you wish for? <laughs> be rich. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, I'm middle. I'm middle class. I mean, I, I'm sure I got the money, but yeah, that's private. That's private stuff. So yeah, I, wonder, I don't think I'm. I don't think I've reached the millionaire status yet, but I feel like I will. No, that's that's actually good, Natalie. What would be your, what would your wish be? Do you do you have an idea yet? We were um, we were talking about this a couple of days ago. Yeah, we were, but I just feel like for me, it's still 
I wish for the world to be more inclusive and for the world to be more safe and all that's that. A, that's a good risk. You know, it's funny. This world, I feel like this world was more peaceful, more peaceful when I was, you know, growing up and all yeah. that, like in the 2000s, because yeah. I'm a, because I was born in the 90s, but, but I grew up like in the 2000s and all that. So yeah. things were more simpler back then, I feel like. Yeah. And I was born in 2000 and I felt, I felt that too. And just as I grew older, it just felt like it started going. <laughs> yeah. Now people, people, some people may not like my opinion of what I have to say, but I feel like social media is what's taken over. Yeah. Yeah. It feels, I sometimes feel that way too, Josh. Yeah. Um, on the social media note, I, I, I think there could be too much of it. And, um, one of, one of the things that I've tried to do is uh, minimize how much, um, screen time. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. I, yeah. So, so I definitely, um, think you're on the track. It's, um, it's very distracting at times. And, uh, sometimes there's a lot of, um, artificial, um, like inflating of, um, emotion you know um that it wouldn't happen in a normal conversation but because it's social media you know people can be yeah and um trying to trying to make you know make it more like it used to be yeah, yeah but for me for me like i was like that too i'm not gonna lie i used to be addicted to social media i wouldn't say i'm addicted to social media now since i'm you know in my late yeah. 20s now I mostly use social media as a platform to help promote myself and best buddies. Yeah. Well, I was going to say your role is changing. You're more of a celebrity these days. So, so yeah. I think, I think um, you're less, you're less a consumer and more um, an influencer, you know? So, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm just glad my city's getting more recognized for more celebrities. I feel like we're not as noticed as much. Yeah. You're very proud of Tampa. Every time I uh, see an interview, um, you you talk about where you're from and um, the what the city is known for. It's actually really cool. I really, yeah. really like that. Yeah, yeah. Just, like we like, I feel like a lot of celebrities don't get as noticed as much as athletes do because you know yeah. when it comes to the Lightning, that's a hockey team, the Rays, and football, like all the yeah. sports. Yeah. So um, if if Natalie and I lived in Tampa, we'd be following the Rowdies. They're your um, USL. Oh, yeah, the soccer team, the Rowdies. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, we're heavy in the soccer. And USL is um, – uh, they're, they're, they're like a tier below the Major League Soccer MLS team. But um, we have so many um, friends that have um, moved on and uh, play in uh, the USL uh, leagues. Yeah. So it's it's really exciting for us to see that. So you must have grew up playing soccer or just watching? Yeah, I grew up playing soccer. Um, that I was like eight, nine, I believe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You were um, you, you well, it, it, so so um, when Natalie was younger, she had um seizures, uh, seizures but but they ended up stop being after a, a brain surgery that she had in two thousand eleven. But she would um, she would go out on the field um, really really young, like eight eight nine years old, and uh, would play on the field. And sometimes she'd have seizures, and we'd have to kind of run out and make sure that she was you know oh. okay. But um, she's always been on the soccer field as long as I can remember. Yeah, yeah. my my dad likes to major league soccer. He he's a fan of Chelsea. Oh yeah. Oh really? Okay. <laughs> All right. They're in yeah, the three. Yeah, three Chelsea jerseys. Oh my gosh, that's funny. We're gonna have to send you something different. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I like I don't like soccer. I don't watch it. Maybe I still get into it, but I like the USA and Brazil because I'm half a Portuguese. Oh, oh yeah, cool. yeah. All right, that's, that's cool. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, soccer can be hard to sit through sometimes, but um, it's, it's definitely... dangerous too. It's dangerous. It's really <laughs> yeah. Dangerous. It, it can be dangerous sometimes too, but uh, it can be a really interesting sport. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I will. That I feel like they got the same thing in common with basketball. Yeah, like a lot of running and a lot of ankle breaks too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's really cool. That's really cool. Um. Okay. Now you've got one more question on the on the yeah. interviews. So what is something going on in the world right now that you are really excited about, Josh? 
All right, so for me, I got some upcoming traveling coming up. In two weeks, I leave to Atlanta, Georgia to watch the Falcons game with the Best Buddies International Board of Directors because actually um, one of the people that's on the board with us plays for the Falcons as a linebacker. Oh, yeah. And then uh, my next trip on the 27th of next month, I leave for uh, Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, I have to do... I'm part. It's this um panel I got to do, and I have to do like a thirty minute speech and all that. And then, last but not least, that I know of is on October seventeenth. I have to fly out to uh, Minnesota. Their uh, best buddy chapter invited me to be in their fashion show and all that. Oh, that's cool! Is that that's part so of so exciting? Are you are you doing anything with any of your clothing? Uh, oh, you talking about from conference? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you can so. Bring that. So, uh, fortunately, the shirts are all sold out. The only shirts they got left is a small. I mean, I should have, I should have, I was expected for it to sell out quick online or in person at conference. So, I guess it's my fault a little bit for not spreading out the word fast enough. And um, the fanny packs are still available, though, but if whoever's paying the fanny packs. I, I mean, dude, that's so exciting, though, that your my merch it's sold out that is yeah it's a good it's a good thing but it was yeah. a lot of but it was a lot of people upset that they didn't have a chance to get it so like i said it's kind of my <laughs> fault for not you know reminding them fast enough but then but i actually want to do another collaboration though with best buddies but not just best buddies like nike like a like a team collaboration like having their own clothing design and all that and they can sponsor best buddies on it but like maybe having a logo on their t-shirts their oh, yeah. pants or on their own sneakers I already know where the headquarters is already for Nike. Like it's in yeah. Oregon and all that. Yeah. And they got best buddies there too. So I feel like something we can make something happen. That's yeah. what I want. You That's know. been my dream. That's been my dream for three years. I, I really wanted to try to do it like back in 2020, but then, you know, COVID happened. So I couldn't really yeah. go through with it. I feel like I have a chance now. I mean, if I just talk to the right people. Yeah. And that would be it, so exciting. Yeah, keep it up because, um, we'll, and again, we'll probably talk a little bit more about this later on, but um, the, the 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 way that you express yourself and how you send your messages, um, you know, it includes things like your branding and, and, and the clothes that you make. So that's really cool. And plus, we're fans of Fanny Packs. So. <laughs> All right, if Fanny Packs still online, you want the link. <laughs> yeah, they're amazing. <laughs> Thank you. So, um. Josh, I'm going to uh, move into our next topic, which is around education. And this this one, I think we were going to focus primarily on um, USF and your attendance there. But I I wanted to start by saying that um, just just in looking back, uh, you graduated from um, Hillsborough High School, and um, we we went online and took a look. It is it's a beautiful school from the outside, but it's also one of the uh, oldest buildings in the school district. So yeah, first school built in 1885. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, um, just, but, but, but gorgeous. And, um, the, uh, the, the, the experience at high school, um, I, I, I was, um, kind of interested about how you found out about USF and their uh, career exploration program. Did it start in high school? And uh, were, were were there any advisors or or, or who, who were your influences at, at high school um, to, to um, possibly like, you know, guide you toward um, a, a program or a career path? Um, how, how did that start? So it was, So it was like senior year when it was getting closer to like graduation and all that, because I were, I already knew I was about to graduate. Yeah. So um, one of my teachers I've had since freshman year, she helped talk to me about stages to me and my mom. Talking about what the program is like and where it's located. She mentioned that it was at the university of South Florida campus. And the only transportation to get there through the program is a city bus. So yeah. after that, um, I did my interview um, at stages at their um, office one day I had to miss school to do my interview there I did my interview and I think I did pretty well I think it lasted for about a good 30 minutes or me maybe even an hour then after that um I guess probably a month 
I think two weeks after I graduated from high school in uh, in June, uh, I found out I made the I made the stages program. That's what it was called, stages. Yeah. Um, the last thing I just had to do is that I had to get a paper signed from my uh, guidance counselor to let him know that I'm going to get into stages and all that. Because the other choice was either staying in school for four more years uh, until you're 22, do this other program on Hillsborough campus called the Choice Academy. It's like individuals with disabilities stay in school until they're 22 and all that. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, and and we have something similar to that here. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, Nat, do you want to talk a little bit about how or what the decision was for you when you were in um, high school too? So we have a, yeah, like my dad said, there's a similar thing like that. So we have two uh, universities here that are um, like that. So there's um utah state university has a thing like well has a you know what's the word program <laughs> oh yeah program that's like that is called aggies elevated up at utah state university and um um you know wolverines elevated up at utah valley university um and it kind of is like that same kind of program. Um, and then we have another sort of program like that um, second one that, that the uh, they were offering and it's called South Valley uh, at South Valley High School. <laughs> and they were, and they told me that they didn't want me doing the second option <laughs> because uh i was too good for that <laughs> that's that's what my teachers told me too that's yeah. similar to what you said yeah that's what my teachers exactly told me i feel like i was the only one from my classes that mostly did mainstream and not really the other ones yeah the other ones in my class yeah because i was like because i was like maybe on a higher functioning level than while my other classmates were actually you know a little bit lower lower functioning yeah Sure. You know, one of one of the things that I think about are the, uh, the uh, at the at the universities, um, there's a couple of things that I think are a good advantage. You you have an opportunity to to, to basically be on a college campus and um, you're um, you're working a little bit more independently um, when you're when you're there. And one of the things that we've actually been kind of hopeful for is um, more uh, networking um opportunities to help build a career uh from a university perspective and also uh developing leadership skills so so those were those were some of the things that we thought were um more um in uh in in natalie's interest when we were talking about it so so i'm actually really excited that you went to usf that was that, that's really cool yeah, what I liked about USF, besides the two-year program I was in, what I also knew Best Buddies was on campus on at USF as well. So I got involved with both stages and Best Buddies, like after class was over. Okay, and actually that was one of the questions I was going to ask you. So so did you get involved with Best Buddies uh, at the college campus? Is, is that where you started an introduction with them? Or or were you did you have a Best Buddies uh, club in high school? Uh, I started Best Buddies in middle school. I had it at middle school, high school, okay. and college. That's, That's cool. really cool. Yeah. So I, so I started when I was 11, when I first started sixth grade. Oh, that's cool. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I got involved with Best Buddies in high school. <laughs> That's how long I took. Yeah. So I've been involved. I think next month will be 15 years since I've been involved, or 15 or 16. Dang, that's awesome. <laughs> I don't think you're old enough to to have that much history, but I'm joking around. <laughs> I'm 20 now, so that's, I'm like a alumni or something. Yeah, a veteran, veteran. Dang, that's awesome. <laughs> so, so Utah is an expansion state for yeah. Best Buddies, um, and and we're actually working on getting a dedicated chapter for us. But right now, we're part of what they call the Mountain Region, and um, yeah, it, it. I mean, it's it's actually really amazing to be part of their programs here, but we're really looking forward to having um, an office and, uh, you know, seeing more um, 
uh, growth in schools. So, so they, they have high school chapters, um, but I, I, I think they're working on moving down in the, in the, um, school system to be able to, um, get involved at the younger level. So, yeah. So you guys were in the Utah area. Yeah. yeah that's right. We're, we're in the Salt Lake Valley. <laughs> Salt Lake city. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Salt Lake City, Utah. Yeah. So you guys do you guys any do you guys have any athletes or any sports that sponsor you guys? Any teams? Uh not yet. Um so Real Salt Lake is our uh professional soccer team and they do have a unified um sports program uh, that, that Natalie's part of. Yeah. Um but that's that's for Special Olympics. And um right now I would say that that's probably um it for us like uh, apollo ono is a really well-known um speed skater uh who was in the olympics um and and he's a utah re or was a utah resident um but he's really supportive of programs here and um matt can you think of anybody else um in utah at least or like the best buddies um yeah, the best buddies uh that's a no face. That, I was I was gonna say uh, maybe you guys. I know you guys got an NBA team down there. Yeah, have, we have, have Utah Jazz. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I was thinking maybe y'all could sponsor them if it's possible. They could sponsor you guys if it's possible. Yeah. yeah. Um. Wait, I think one year, um, Utah Jazz did sponsor Best Buddy Walk. Um. Uh. -huh. uh before before, and I and I think I had um, we had it on our Best Buddy shirt um for the walk so i think that was possible <laughs> yeah but um to to that point i i think it's a great idea i'm, yeah. I'm gonna look up a photo i was gonna well i shouldn't mess with natalie too much um <laughs> we were... I, just thought that, I just thought that could help the more no, no you're you're good joshua <laughs> yeah, yeah definitely not a problem um I'll find this. So Natalie was at a camp um, for uh, South University, actually, and um, I'm looking for her picture. Uh, I'm not going to. I'll 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 put it up after um, uh, after the interview. I can just edit it. Oh, in the post, but, yeah. Um, oh yeah. You so is a thing that Special Olympics is starting to do. It's like something called South University, where it where you go to these, um, uh, like, every year, I mean, every year, sorry, every month you do this class based on um, um, like, like a different subject. And last uh, month it was, I think, defense. Uh, yeah. Right. I believe. And so they had one of the jazz players there. And so um, that's a picture of me with a jazz player. <laughs> and Josh, I have to laugh because um, in the picture, both of them are uh, born in 2000. And Natalie is just so tiny compared to him. <laughs> yeah, how tall is he? Uh, I, honestly, I'll have to look it up. But he, he, he he's um, at... Pro probably seven feet um tall i i was just uh i was short next to him too so uh so. i'm six feet so he's probably taller than me oh yeah yeah he's a big guy he's a big guy but, yeah um i noticed natalie's wearing those uh best buddies vans i got those too well not that yeah. version but i got the slip-ons yeah i oh, have cool. the vans <laughs> yeah yeah right on I raised a lot of money for. Her. I mean, I almost won, but someone beat me by ten k. Yeah, well, the um, so and so you're talking a little bit about the champions programs right now, is that right? For the friendship walks, friendship walks. Oh, the friendship walks. Okay, okay. So I won. I won the champ of the year last year. I just got nominated actually a few days ago. So Florida, I think, is probably a pretty tough state to uh, compete in fundraising because there's a lot of people who are involved in programs there. And um, I, I will I will say any money raised for Best Buddies is great. It's, it, you know, we never 
um try to try to make it too much of a competition um yeah yeah so uh, i like, don't so like florida is already well known for best buddies because yeah. our headquarters is like in miami and all that i feel like we're starting to get more funding now than before because during the time of covid it didn't really raise much because a lot of people was you know jobless they were yeah. unemployed and just everything was shutting down and then yeah. finally everything's opened back up about maybe yeah. I say maybe in 2021, things opened up more. And, you know, that's when we started getting money in into Best Buddy slowly but surely. Yeah. So during during COVID, uh, I, I am curious, how, how did that affect your work at Holland and Knight? Um, I know that you're an office assistant there, but were, were, were you required to go into work still or, or did you end up working from home during that time? So I actually wasn't employed with Holland and Knight yet until like after... So the jobs program wasn't really here yet. It it was just fairly new. So before, so in twenty twenty, well, actually even before twenty twenty, I was employed on campus of USF through the stages program, working as food service and all that. Okay. So um, uh, so I feel like in twenty twenty, um, I was laid off because of the beginning of COVID nineteen and in, in the month of March. That's when everything was about to shut down in the Florida area in Tampa where I'm at. So I was jobless for about a good probably three or four months. I didn't start working again until August. Now it's back on campus of USF, just at a different food service location. I was at Panda Express for probably a month and a half. And then I got laid off there, I had to transfer to Einstein Bake Bengals. Got laid off there too at the same time. So it was kind of a little disappointing, and you know, I honestly didn't want to keep on doing that. So, so I guess I made a little upsetting status on Facebook saying, you know, well, I don't, I'm, I'm jobless. I guess, I, I guess it's gonna be tough finding the job because I, at the time, I didn't know how long COVID was gonna last and all that. Yeah. So then, um, one of the new job coaches, which I didn't know we even had a job coach. I knew we had citizens, but I didn't know we had a job coach already because. Um, the jobs program just started in Tampa around the time things were starting to open back up. Yeah. So we was just, I guess, job hunting, like going on Zoom, having like weekly Zoom meetings and all that about what job would be best for my hobbies and all that. I was interested in being a uh, office assistant. I told her that was my interest. Um, but um, I tried. I wanted to try to work on um, USF campus. Well, I've job trained that the students with disability services. I wanted to job train. I wanted to get a job there originally, but I couldn't because I wasn't a student. Even though uh, our um our uh, program was on USF campus, we weren't really students. We were still part of um the school of county um through the program and all that. Right. Okay. So um, so I guess maybe I think in the month of June. Yeah, no, I take that back. It was May, May, May. Um, I did my first interview. We, I think they finally found the job. They mentioned to me about Holland Knight. I was excited. Um, I did my um interview through Zoom. Got my interview. Well, well, I actually had to go through um for Kishno Rehab. I had to get through them to get to sign papers and all that to get me into the jobs program because I was ready to branch out and find a new job, something new, not being food service forever so so after that um, i did my interview hall and night and i was hired on the spot and i've been and i they wanted me to work start working there in august but i actually started early i started in uh june of 2021 Mm -hmm. and ever since then i've been a plate with them for two years and it's all thanks to the jobs program i'm like the second person to be placed in the job through the jobs program in tampa yeah Okay. That's awesome. They they are a really good company too, and they they are always a um they they always help those with intellectual disabilities help find jobs too, um, which is always awesome. Yeah, I I agree. I'm the first job placement for Holland Night in Tampa because I know there's other cities and other states that have participants employed at Holland Night. Yeah, some are part time and some are full time. I'm 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 part time so. That's awesome. Yeah, it's it it's it's great regardless. Um Nat, do you do you want to talk a little bit about um 
the, just recently the job fair at uh, Jordan District and how that yeah. went? Yeah. So um, we ended up getting a uh, little card in, the, in our mail just a few weeks ago for our local Jordan School District um, for um, for our local for a local job fair and so I went to it for a um, couple Wednesdays ago and so I applied for um, a few uh, teacher aid positions um, and I uh, what and yeah oh, sorry and I I uh, had an interview for last Wednesday. Uh, it, last Wednesday Ooh. for um, a te teacher uh, aid position at one of our local schools. Oh, you want to be a teacher assistant? Yeah. Um, I want to be a teacher uh, assistant because... Growing up, I I started to love te um, teaching um, and uh, and kids and just starting to like love what I do with like Special Olympics and Best Buddies and it just really touched my heart and. No, it's you know it's funny. I want. I also wanted to be a teacher assistant when I was, you know, after I graduated from high school. Yeah. I was trying to get a job through that, through the stages program because I used to job train in um, early yeah. childhood and all that. But then I guess I realized, you know, that actually wasn't my calling either. After realizing it, it's yeah. not that it was hard or nothing. I just felt like I could find better. Like I love the kids, but I feel like there's so much more I can do. But that's yeah. what my girlfriend likes to do too. She wants to be a teacher assistant. So oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that my my best friend also sort of inspired me too because she um she wants to be a special education teacher as well. And I uh she kind of inspired me to also want to be one too, because uh I I, I do love art and I told myself that if art um didn't if art didn't happen in my future that I would go <laughs> if art would be I mean um teacher assistant would be my second path. Special education would be my wow. second path. Okay, so you want education as your hobby. That's what's up. Yeah. <laughs> so Katie originally was Natalie's partner for the podcast and um she was a llama. So so anytime we talk about Katie, we have to bring the llama back. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. <laughs> yeah. But that, that's cool that Vanessa um wants to be a special education. Uh, oh, you know her name? Yeah, I know her name. <laughs> uh yeah, uh, I'm glad you remember her. You must, yeah. see, you must see me post. You must see me post her a lot. So. Yes, I do. Yeah. She, she spoke at the leadership conference too. So we were. Yeah, we were, uh, she oh, was. Yeah, she was at the conference. So. Yeah, we, yeah, we, she we was. were attending virtually to 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 watch some of the some of the stuff that was going on. So that was really yeah. I had a, I, I had a lot to do at conference. I could barely. I just need a bodyguard. Let's just say that I almost need a bodyguard. <laughs> I, I love that though i think it's real it's it's great that you're um you're you know you're 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 being more widely recognized and um clearly there's a lot of um you know uh people coming including us uh, who want to come and talk to you so so it's yeah. great that you're you're you know keeping the message al alive and talking uh to to so many folks i i, I really admire that it's really Really but don't you worry, you have Vanessa, she will block every all the people <laughs> for you. No, I love that woman a lot. That's cool. That's so cool. so let's let's um let's actually move uh along. Um we've we've talked a little bit about um education and 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 and, and jobs, um, but it might be it might be good to talk a little bit about what you're um uh initially 
famous for. Um, the, back in uh, 2021, um, you participated in um, the halftime show in Tampa, Florida, and you were you were one of the dancers uh, for uh, the weekend. And um, this was a really really cool event, but it was also a really, um, I, I, I think, uh, kind of a life changing thing because, um, that I, that I know of, this is, this is the first time that you really started, uh, being in the social media spotlight. Um, so there, there was, a. Uh, um, you know, beside besides all of the addition work and 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 practice and whatnot, um, there were there were some TikTok videos of of you that uh, got on um, different shows where you were dancing and um, talking about you know being the 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 first person with um, autism to to be performing at a show like this, and uh, you were also um, recorded uh, talking to the weekend. And um, both of those videos just got really big. I mean, it was really oh, the video too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That they were they were pretty amazing. And I'll I'll I'll, I'll edit some short clips of those and put them into in, into this for reference so that people know what I'm talking about. But but um, I th I think things really got big then for you. And uh, I I was just I was just kind of curious. Um, you know, c clearly watching the videos, you 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 love to dance. You mentioned that dance is really important to you, but, but how, how did you get involved in dance and, and, and where, when did, when did you learn about the audition for the halftime show? I mean, what, what was it that kind of like brought you in to, 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 to be able to do this? All right. So dancing is fun for me. I never done no dance classes or nothing though. Um, for you guys, I don't know. Yeah. I, I didn't born with autism, but I was also born with um, a very strong photographic memory. I was, yeah. I was born with that too. So I remember everything's from heart. So with dancing, I have three um, dance inspirations. The first one will have to be Michael Jackson. Happy belated birthday to him, by the way. Oh, that's um, awesome. <laughs> Chris Brown. And uh, last but not least is um, um, Usher. Usher. Oh, yeah. What I, what, I like about th what I like about their dancing is the footwork. I like how they're fast with their feet and all that, and just other moves along with it. And how I got involved with the Super Bowl, um, this was actually back in 2020 in December. Uh, we had our very first back in person um kickoff party for the gala. It was a little late because our gala was in October. It was just a virtual. We just did the kickoff late, like in the year in of, of um December. So our area director, her name is Morgan. Um, everyone was about to leave. We was like there for like maybe an hour or two. I was about to get ready to go to to go home until she brought me over to a group of guys who I thought would just um just network people there to network or just support best buddies. So we shook hands, even exchanged business cards or whatever. One of the guys asked if I knew how to dance and all that. And I said, Yeah, I I know how to dance and all that. So they offered me to try out for the Super Bowl and all that because I that's when I realized that they were also they were actually radio radio station people and all that they had their own radio station. I forgot the name of the podcast, but you know, I I remember they did that. That's that's really cool. That's really cool. So so it was it was a little networking at uh, one of the best buddies galas. That's yeah yes it was de that's how I found out. But I will never forget that day. That's how I got the opportunity. So okay. after. Accepting that opportunity, um, they gave me um, they gave me the instructions um through my email to create my own bio, and I also had to send a dance video dancing to any weekend song to the choreographer of the Super Bowl. So I did all of that, and that was it. And then I guess maybe two weeks after New Year's passed, New Year's passed. It was I was still jobless at the time. I wasn't working yet. So um, I was sitting on a couch, I guess just watching TV or just browsing through my phone. And I got a random call and all that. I was, the number I didn't know at all. Um, I think it just said the number. It didn't say who it was. So I just let it ring and all that until it stopped. And then I just pressed my phone down and then just watched the TV and all that. And then I think a minute later, um, I, I heard my phone buzz again. And there was a voicemail from that same number that called. 
So I played that voicemail and it says, hey, this is the director of the Super Bowl halftime show. Then after hearing that, I immediately dialed back and all that. Luckily, she answered. So that was the good news. So she called. Yeah. So she called and said, well, she answered and she said, hey, we were just looking at your video and all that. And we are happy to announce that you've earned a spot to dance in the Super Bowl halftime show and all that. that so, so that was awesome. So then they were giving me instructions. There's papers I had to sign. This whole thing had to be a secret. Um, yeah. I couldn't tell no one. They were concerned about us person that, posting that on social media. If we were posting on social media, we probably told some friends and rumors would have been spread about it. We would have been kicked off immediately. No second chances. So we had to keep this thing secret. We had to get vaccinated about every week and we couldn't miss practice. Yep. Yep. And each and so the Super Bowl thing lasted for about two weeks, and each practice was eight hours. So I had to go kind of MIA from Best Buddy. I told them I had to tell a little lie and told them that, um, <laughs> that family was in town. <laughs> I love that. that. That's that's really really cool. That's awesome. That's an awesome story. Yeah, that yeah that was funny. And uh, what was I gonna say? It was something I was gonna say. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. One day, uh, one of the practices, I would think it was part of the second week, there was, like, local, I guess, college students interviewing the dancers and all that. So I remember they were interviewing me and all that, saying, how does it feel to be in the Super Bowl halftime show? And I was like, it's cool. I actually, a fun fact about me, I actually have um, high functioning autism and all that. And then after hearing that, that's when they, that's what that's what interests them the most. That's when they call start calling more people to interview me and all that. Uh, once I said that, that I have fun the autism, and that's what got their attention the most. I, I will I will never forget that. I remember that day, how it happened. Yeah, they just seemed awesome. to like focus right on on, yeah. on that, and then there were there more uh, conversations because of it. Yeah, yeah, like three or four of them wanted to ask me more questions. Once when, when I just said I have fun the autism, that's what got their attention the most. I remember that. Yeah, that is. So then, um, asked, then, then finally, the night of the Super Bowl. Well, I think the daytime, the day of the Super Bowl, um, we arrived on our um secret location. We was actually on USF campus at the yeah. um basketball arena. We had to go there to like just rest and eat and you know take a nap and just rest before the night of the of the of the Super Bowl and all that. So then, after we was getting ready, we was um doing like dressing rehearsal and all that. I got my outfit, got my mask and all that because that was the week, that was the theme. Yep. Uh, and then we had, um, we were on those buses and all the roads were closed for all of us to go to Raymond James Stadium where the Buccaneers play it and all that. So after that, we got off the bus. We did see a few celebrities entering the um the stadium, like rappers, um, actors, actresses, et cetera. That was awesome. Yeah. Uh, it's too bad we couldn't take pictures with them because they had security or surrounding them. It's it's still amazing. And and honestly, um, Josh, I, I, I think you've met a lot of people who are um yeah famous in, in yeah. different different ways. Um Yeah, yeah, I did. I'll get to that. I'll get to that soon too after the story. Yeah. Okay. So the night of the Super Bowl halftime, so um we executed our moves and all that and on the field and all that. Unfortunately, we couldn't stay to watch the whole game like I wanted to. We got on our buses and then rode back. And then that's when the director said we could finally post the pictures and all that. I posted my pictures on Instagram first, then Facebook. And that's where the, immediately the whole internet was in total shock because I should, because they didn't know I was dancing in the Super Bowl halftime show in my own hometown. <laughs> that the is best cool. world was The best buddies world was shook and shocked. Because they're like, what the heck? <laughs> I know. After watching the Super Bowl and all that, because they were watching the performance on TV and all that, and then I guess maybe a few minutes after, I guess they were checking their phone. I guess they got notifications and all that from me, and they saw it. The secret was out. Yeah, that is so cool. That is so cool. Yeah, and not knowing that it was going to get the whole internet's attention and all that, um, I think the caption I put in it is what changed a lot. Is what changed everything for me when I put, "I believe I'm I be I might be the first person with this to ever dance in the Super Bowl halftime." So I was I wasn't sure at first. Like I was, I just had to say it, but you know I was exhausted that night in a way, so I went to bed. Um, and then woke up the next morning. I still heard my phone buzzing and all that. 
being shared everywhere worldwide. And then what really got me more excited is when one of the staff members from the Miami office uh, sent me a screenshot through my phone saying that the weekend, the actual weekend, uh, we tweeted my uh, post about me dancing in the Super Bowl halftime show, even posted me on his Instagram. Yeah. And that described my uh super that described my autism as a superpower and all that. And that's when I found out that what I said was actually true. I was the first known person to ever dance in the Super Bowl halftime show and I went viral ever since. Got recognition from the weekend. Um now this news, everyone knew who I was. The yeah. whole whole city and other places. Well, NFL picked it up and as a story, and I think I think you had the Showtime um, uh, series uh, that that, yeah. that picked you up. So, mm-hmm. so there was a lot going on uh, with that after the yeah. after the event. That was really uh, twenty. Yeah, twenty twenty one was just the beginning of my um, fulfilled yeah. fulfilled journey and all that. Yeah. <laughs> so, Joshua, I, I I have to ask. I mean, what was it? What was it like going from? 2020, you know, it, COVID, COVID's been going on. You, you you haven't been working for a little while. You're feeling a little frustrated. And then in 2021, it just kind of seems like everything went your way. Like you, 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 you were, um, you know, uh, going into uh, the Super Bowl halftime show. And um, that, that was obviously phenomenal, but, but you, you also got the job with Holland and Knight and, um, I think this was the same year that you became part of the board of directors with. Yeah, that's like, right. In June, I got an email from Anthony Case Rapper offering me a spot. And of course I was going to accept it. I was never going to deny it. Yeah. That, I mean, that's, that's amazing. That is amazing. But I mean, did you, did you feel like your dreams were coming true? I mean, what, what yeah, was-, it was 2021, everything was coming true. I feel like 20. I mean, only good thing, only one good thing happened in 2020 with virtual leadership conference when I won the Spirit of Courage Award. But in 2021, it's like all my wishes was coming true the most. Yeah, and I, but I have a feeling it was a lot of the hard work that you put up front. You know that 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 you have um, been so involved with Best Buddies that you are yeah. being recognized for the programs and the participation that you had leading up to that. You know, and even even though. I, I like the fact that you talked about work and that it was kind of hard for a while because yeah. um, a lot of people with intellectual disabilities um, experience the, 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 the same thing, you know, either, either they can't find work or it's very difficult to, 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 to find a job that's meaningful. And um, I, I, I think that that's kind of an important story to, to talk about because we want to improve that experience. And I think that best buddies helps with that. But, um, you, you know, letting other people be aware that it's not just, you know, something that they're experiencing, that this is something that that, that we have to raise more awareness about and try to help um, fix a, a, a problem that we have is is really good. And, and honestly, your story is really amazing. Um, I I just I, I love I love what you did. And I love the fact that you posted and talked about it um at, after the after the event when you were able to share it on social media um but uh, that that attention that you've gotten since then is very deserving and i'm actually really really happy about the success that you've had so so thank you yeah yeah so um let, let's let's move a little bit into the champions movie because um this this was kind of like a next event um the, or the next big thing i guess uh yeah, yeah, Natalie has the movie. movie. That's what's and up. I, we've seen it a couple of times. We actually got to see it before it was released um, officially in theaters yeah. uh, through through the Best Buddies program. There was a preview that we uh, night that we got to go and see. Uh, yeah, that was crazy. Twenty twenty two. This year was even more crazy than last than two years ago. Yeah, it's cool though. I mean, it's uh, it's awesome. Um, so I, I did, I did want to ask, um, we, we were researching the film and, uh, we, we did find out that there was this Spanish language film that, um, came out and, and I think it was the inspiration for the U S version of champions that you were in, but yeah, yeah. The Hispanic one, I can't pronounce the Hispanic name, but that was the original champion <laughs> yeah you said it right you said it right that was the original film before my version was made yeah. 
Yeah, it was it was just it was really surprising um, to 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 find that. Um, although it was good, um, and uh, and 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 apparently there's an India uh, version of the film that that hasn't started production yet, but the, yeah. there's a director who's really interested in taking the story and 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 using it. So so it it's exciting because it's um, clearly sort of an international theme that that is recognized everywhere right I, I mean you've got it in europe you've got it in asia you've got it in the u.s and 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 they're all making versions of their or have made their versions of the film but but i i i think that people really identify with it yeah. and um you were an actor in the film so so you you were there you probably were part of conversations about like you know how should this scene be played out or what, you know, what, what, what's, um, you know, what's the emotion, what's the story behind this and how, you know, how do we want um, people to, to react to, to this. Um, but I, I, I just, I have to ask, I mean, if you were the one that was going to make like the new version of champions, is there something in the film that you would add that um, told, told more of the story that you want to tell? Yeah, so my part of the story that you guys seen from the film, I mean, y'all may think y'all can't just assume or judge people or root yeah. for a reason. You have to understand their backstory and figure out why they're the reason they are because no one can't just grow up to be mean their whole life. There has to be a reason that there has like someone has had to trigger them the whole lives rather if it's from a family member or rather if you just rather if someone's just treated you about your whole life or if you just experienced um ptsd from like car crash which i did in the movie yeah. and that yeah. yeah yeah that's that well i mean that's that's really cool i i i love that that element of the film was there and the yeah. the way your character talked about um, you know, being able to find forgiveness. Um, you know, you you, you couldn't uh, the, your your character the act uh, the the um, uh, the role. Um, you said that uh, you couldn't uh, forgive the person who um, caused the, the accident, reason. but maybe you could start with a coach. You know, that was yeah yeah. Forgiveness was the most powerful thing of the movie. Yeah. Forgiveness and the substance that was the most powerful part of the whole movie. That's that a lot of my friends and family said that was the most emotional scene I ever did in the film. That's cool. That's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> <Not just hopping. laughs> yeah. yeah, I heard. I was at a theater myself, and you know what's funny? <laughs> you know what's funny? Um, I was. You know what's funny? Um, when people were watching that movie. It was so funny to just sneak in and just sit up all the way top and just enjoy my whole movie, just watch my own movie. And then finally, when the movie's over, we all walk out. And it's funny when people turn around and just notice I was in that movie and take pictures with me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like like when people, when, when the actor sneaks into the auditorium and they watch their movie and then people don't know that they are a, they are the person that are in the movie yeah that's that's really cool yeah, i did that to so many i did that in so many theaters it was fun just seeing the crowd's reaction and all that yeah that's that's awesome i sit all the way in the back to make sure no one doesn't see me until like after we walk out yeah yeah, yeah. That, that is awesome <laughs> thank you we we talked a little bit about this at the beginning. Um, you you mentioned that you're a sports fan and that you kind of grew yeah. up in basketball. Um, and um, obviously, uh, you're also a football fan. So so we can we can definitely mention that. But um, the um, I think one of, one of the questions that we wanted to ask is like as far as sports go, um, how 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 do you how do you incorporate sports in your life i mean do, is is it something that you watch or do you do you play a lot and um how 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 do you kind of keep fit um with uh with with sports and activities all right so with football it's definitely a sport i watch my mom didn't want me to do football like in high school or even little league because it could be dangerous it's a dangerous sport yeah, when yeah. it comes to concussions or even broken bones yeah uh, basketball i didn't play as a real sport i just play for fun that basketball um skills you saw from the movie it's just a natural talent because you know i got basketball in yeah. my because i had uncles and uh 
in a family that played basketball and they yeah. were pretty good. I didn't see highlights or nothing. I was just hearing it from my mom. Yeah. And um my first real sport I played when I was a minor, like elementary, was baseball. Baseball was actually my first ever sport oh. I ever played. Because we got some ba- some baseball love in the family too. My dad did baseball. I had an uncle who used to play baseball from way back in the day. So but baseball wasn't really my favorite, like football and basketball was. Yeah. But there's just more action in those two sports, football and basketball. Yeah. Yeah. Just, and I just recently um joined the flat football special Olympics team for um USF Best Buddies. So hey. I'm gonna be doing a lot. So I'm gonna be I'm gonna be very active too. But um in high school, track was my favorite sport because I just enjoy running. Running has always been my favorite because um right now I do five Ks probably every two weeks on Wednesdays. Oh. And yeah, so running is ev- so running is like everything to me. Like I'm more healthy. Um, it gets me energized, and it just keeps me on my feet twenty four seven. I love that. That's I- awesome. Yeah. Um, and we'll we, we, Nat- Natalie. Um, we'll we'll talk about the treadmill stuff that la- a little later. But but she 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 does soccer. That I think that's our uh, that's what's in our. Well, I I do soccer. I, I do cycling. I do dance. <laughs> I oh, did nice. track and field um for Special Olympics as well. So th- I did that, and I do so many other sports. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did that too in Special Olympics in middle school. I did track and field, but yeah. high school didn't have no Special Olympics team. So so I may so I may say this now I mean I didn't say it back then because I was young and I wasn't thinking about yeah. it but I feel like I was probably the first participant from my ESC class to participate in regular sports because I did regular track and field at my high school awesome. yeah and um Josh honestly I think the power of inclusion in sports is yeah. really important um it's it's probably one of the best places for um uh, people with IDD to to get to know peers and 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 build real really strong relationships. I don't I don't know if if you have anybody who you um are are close with from sports, um, whether it's from middle school or high school that you know you still hang out with just because you met them on the field somewhere. But um, that I mean, from high school, I mean, it's different. Some went their separate ways some went pro or just some just quit sports to focus on other careers some even moved out of the state to focus on other careers or like i said went pro and from middle school and all that i've had childhood friends um my whole life and we went to the same elementary middle school just different high schools but we keep in contact and the only times when we were in sports was middle school, like when we did Special Olympics track and field. Yeah. But they're not but they're not really into that sports like that. I used to just continue to just stick with sports because you know it's my favorite. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually really, really cool. Um so Nat- Natalie, um, she mentioned that she got involved in um best buddies in um high school so in uh 2017 she actually went to her first best buddies friendship walk and this is the next year in 2018 but um this here's natalie but but all of these um girls are from natalie's uh soccer team and this is one of her coaches um but but they can't they came out in support of natalie for best buddies uh at the friendship walk so so in terms of like you know friendships and meaningful relationships there's a lot of people that natalie met through soccer um that that have been really important to her and and i love the match socks yeah oh yeah (laughs) you noticed that (laughs) I gave them all those socks, and that I think those are Rachel's socks. Yeah, those are Rachel's um, socks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we have a family Ooh. friend that has her own sock business um, that uh, is based out of Austin, Texas, and so um, those are her socks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. Um. So, so um, the the next question is still kind of sports related, but um, we just um, wanted to get your feedback about this. So, so um, we we're tying Tom Brady into this because 
uh, you know, Buccaneers because he's yeah. on board of directors with you. But, but um, you know, it's, it's one thing to talk about celebrities that you've met in the past or that you know now. Uh, but but there's also kind of like the celebrity that is you and um, you've you've really grown in uh, recognition in the U.S. Uh, people people know who you are. And, um, you know, in that in that regards, you are kind of like your own celebrity now. I mean, you mentioned, you know, being at the movie theaters and getting to sign, uh, you know, autographs for people who had seen the film and stuff like that. But how, how do you think that, that celebrity status has changed you? I mean, is there um what you know what's good and bad about it i'm not gonna lie i mean the bad part about it is not too bad i was cocky i was definitely cocky I, I had some family and friends and staff from best buddy that had to teach me the importance of being humble and then the good part out of it was you know just being humble then you know supporting others letting them know that if i can do it then they can do it too yeah that that's a really good message uh, yeah. for for anybody who becomes famous, and especially somebody who's famous quickly. Um, it it's uh, it, humility is uh, a, 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 it's a grace to to be able to share that. That's good. So that's really cool. That's really yeah. cool. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I I do I do have to ask. Um, you, you've um, in in the past you've been an athletic assistant. Um, and you've also worked as a teacher assistant. And you mentioned that you don't think that, like, you know, working as a teacher's aide or a, or a, or a teacher would be you. But do you, do you especially after this um, uh, film um, where you're, you know, on a team and you're watching a coach struggle, um, would you ever consider being a coach? Is that something that might be, um, you know, you've got your own flag football team, you've got your own basketball team, and you're you're coaching in the future. Never- I mean, for me, I've never been asked or told that you could be a coach. Most people has told me, even my own mom said I could be like a good personal trainer because I post a lot of workout videos and I'd be showing progress how my workouts be and all that. Because um, one thing about me when it comes to workouts, I have a really great upper body strength. That's my biggest strength in working out. Like when it comes to doing pull-ups, push-ups, like every cardio, because cardio is my most favorite workout of all time at the gym. Oh, that's cool. And, and I've seen your videos that you post, so you are good at that. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> be, that'd be that'd be a really cool avenue to see you uh, growing in too. So yeah, so. yeah. Joshua is going to have his own series of workout videos on on Peloton. Yeah, I just <laughs> I just doing to inspire myself, and inspire others. Because yeah. to tell you the truth, when I yeah. got back from filming Champions, because I was in Canada and I just came back home in December of 2021. Right. I was definitely overweight. I wasn't yeah. like too overweight and all that. It's just the only the only targets I was trying to get rid of the fat from is was mostly like like the belly fat yeah. and the high fat. It was so bad. I noticed it was bad like no, when remember you can't do this without the fat. <laughs> Yeah. When I realized when I realized I needed to lose weight was when one of my pants ripped. Oh, <laughs> That's embarrassing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it happened at work. I'm so glad yeah. no one didn't see it though. Luckily, it was a small tear, not a big one. Yeah, I, I was on the same boat as you, Josh. I was trying to also like lose weight on, so I was on this sort of journey to lose weight as well. Yeah. So I was getting on my treadmill and also uh, on my recumbent bike. <laughs> So, yeah, well, well, for me, um, what was I gonna say? I see a personal, tra- I see a personal trainer. Shout out to my personal trainer. He's the one that's been training me hard too. And then, like I mentioned earlier, I do five Ks. I'm actually part of a running club by uh Fit to Run. They're a shoe store and all that. Yeah, they, yeah. they provide shoes for us and all that. And and we just do our five K. It's not a competition or nothing. We just run for fun. No one's timing themselves unless they want to. And some walk too if they can't complete the whole race. Uh, Joshua, I think that's outstanding. Um, lifelong fitness is so important and starting yeah. healthy habits, um, you know, when you're younger, um, is, is really important. So, so I, I love that you're doing that. Um, you, you, you mentioned the running stories. I, I think there are a lot of, um, 
different stores across the country that actually offer similar programs. Um, here, here in Salt Lake, we have um, Salt Lake Running Company uh, that that does um, uh, run clubs, and and it's the same it's the same idea. But uh, getting support from a community of people who come from very different backgrounds but love to run or they want to run um, yeah. has been has been amazing for for folks uh, here. So that's yeah. Really that's yeah, that's that's awesome. For me, um, it's a regular running club. No one doesn't even know I have a disability. I mean, I don't have to tell anyone that I have a disability all the time. I don't want to. I don't have to do right. that. I just, yeah. I just tell them who we are. I mean, yeah, I just, I just do regular stuff. Really, I mean, I don't let my disability limit me. Like no one should. It whoever has one, I just, I just continue to just do what I do. That's what my parents taught me. Yeah. 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 And Natalie, you kind of say the same thing, right? Do what you love. Yeah. <laughs> I you say, too. yeah, I always say, do what you love. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. So, so um, last question on champions. Um, did, did you, did you end up keeping any, anything from the film that reminded you of the time that you had on set? Um, I, I saw a video where um, you were uh, signing autographing basketballs. Uh, it looked like the whole um, cast uh, was, was there doing, doing that, but did, did you keep anything that was, you know, kind of a reminder of when you when you were on the champions film oh like from conference signing the basketball or uh, from, well it, or... It, it may it may have it may have been from uh time on the set or or after that but but i'm just curious if um you uh have anything that uh, yeah yeah I, I do actually i do i got a champions um duffel bag um a champions jacket and uh portraits pictures of the champions cast Oh, that's cool. Okay. Right on. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I really love that. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. We're going to move, we're going to move into uh best buddies role. We've already talked a little bit about this, um, but uh, you, you did, you did tell us that you became involved with best buddies back in middle school. So, so, so it's been a long time. 15 years is a long time for, yeah. for, 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 anyone but but um it's it's actually quite remarkable that you've really grown um in your role there um i think uh one one of the things that i was going to talk about was um the 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 role that you have with um fundraising for uh best buddies now um you you mentioned on insta that um this that 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 you're in um a mission partner role for uh, this year, and that it's your eighth year that you've been doing mission partner work. Um, yeah. That was actually really cool. Um, we're we're going to do a shout out to Dean Valenti. Dean, no, hell. <laughs> no, but I know you do. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> and, uh, I, but it's really it's really cool that, yeah. um, that 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 you're in that role. But it also means that you have done a lot of fundraising yourself, and that you're. Yeah to kind of like a mentorship role uh to 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 do this so can can you talk a little bit about um what it means to be part of a champions gala and what 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 you're doing um these days um as a um as a mentor as a mission partner um you definitely have a lot of responsibilities just as much as you're um you're a champion and all that um, you gotta think of strategies and ideas of how to fundraise, right? If it, right, if you want them to fundraise online, or if you had your own, um, or if you had your own event, local event, for people to pay money for, and that money goes straight to your um fundraising page and all that. So that's the pretty much all the strategy. You just gotta know a lot of people. That's one thing, and you know, it's I know it could be hard asking the same people every year to donate to your page I, i've noticed that in a while i noticed the struggle that can be for both the fundraiser and the people that are supposed to fundraise yeah it's about um knowing the people who will always um donate to you and all that like over and over every year it's just about um asking new people i mean because you know we do make new friends every year and people are willing if you just ask and if you yeah. do this, and if they say they will donate, but don't donate yet, just um, just send them a reminder if if you have to. Yeah, yeah. I um, I will, I will say that I think, I think um, your your point about 
asking the same people um, in your in your network. It, it has been on our mind too. Um, but that importance about growing your network and finding, um, you know, ways to increase, um, you know, who you, who you reach out to um, has been, has been, um, I think, a challenge uh, for us. Matt, do you want to tell, tell them about the Cersei uh, fundraiser that we did in 2021? Okay, so back in 2021, um, for the best for Utah's best buddy walk, uh, my, well, our friends uh, that are musicians that I was telling you about um, helped me raise over $4,000 um, for our best buddy uh, walk. So this is for Team Green. Uh, because they, ha they did a, sh uh, a live stream called the true color show and it was just absolutely amazing <laughs> so um, as you see here they did uh, this little um, show here <laughs> and it was just really incredible that they helped me raise that much money for best buddies was that the year you won champion of the year um, so, so funny story, I ended up just getting nominated for, um, Champion of the Year just this year. <laughs> oh, okay, I get it. Yeah, it, um, this, this, this year we just put, um, a lot of, a lot of work. Na Natalie was, was really looking at trying to find new ways to, um, uh, reach out to, to, to folks and share messages about best buddies, but, but, but really about inclusion too. And, um, I, uh, I, I will say that we're, um, really excited about doing this again. Um, Nat Natalie's a, a candidate, uh, for champions, just like Dean is. Um, so, so, um, we'll be, we'll be working on, um, fundraising, I think up until November 8th for our gala. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna move into Swagman as a topic now. That's our that's our uh, next topic. Um, so so first, let's let's talk a little bit about the story behind the name Swagman. Um, where did you become Swagman? What's what's the story behind that? It's actually an awkward story. This was back in 2013 when I was a sophomore in high school. I actually heard about the name Swagman from an ex. Oh, yeah, not a lot of people know about that, but I don't mind um telling the truth about it. Yeah, but I was Mr. Swagman at first for my ex. I was she gave me a shirt that said Mr. Swagman. That's when I got the name. But, you know, I won't get into details. We did break up. But the race of the, the relationship didn't last long. I mean, yeah. even though the relationship wasn't good, you know, I was kind of like I was still feeling the name. Yeah, right on. Right on. That's cool. Yeah, but then one of my other friends changed my name from Mr. Swagman saying, why can't you just be Swagman Felder? I was like, okay, better, better. I'll be Swagman Felder. Swagman Felder is way better than Mr. Swagman. I love that. I love that. So uh, I still, a friend is, so an ex gave me the name, and then uh, one of my homeboys changed it, changed it up for me. That's awesome. <laughs> I don't think we've been lucky enough to get a name from someone else. I, uh, uh, I joke around with Natalie that um, if I had a, a name, it'd be Shoehorn. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I'm called Swagman, you know, I'm just in, I just have a passion for fast, and I don't like being the style. Yeah, no, I think it's great. Yeah, yeah. 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 And I I love the fact that you picked it up and put it on the clothes. Um, yeah, yeah. So the um the the shirt that you made for the leadership conference and the fanny pack that you made for leadership conference are those the first um, uh, clothing items that you've made, or have you done other clothes in the in the past it's the first i'm the very first global ambassador or buddy in general to ever have my very first clothing collaboration with the with um anthony case rapper's daughter she's the one that designed the shirts and all oh, that that is cool that's awesome yeah 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 well, so if you, so if you know david quillen the vp for best buddies he's the one who um 
gave me this opportunity. So shout out to David Quillen. He helped, he um hooked me up with um Chessy. That's Anthony's uh, daughter's name. And she's the one who worked with me to to create these shirts and all that, the shirts and Franny Pad. Uh, we've been working on this since April and I got the the images of the designs the about the end of June. Okay. Okay. Awesome. We love you, David. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that, but, but, but for your brand, I, I, I love, I love the idea of Swagman being yeah. a brand um, yeah. and um, incorporating that into the inclusion messaging. So yeah. uh, what you're doing is really, really cool. And yeah. the, um, here, I, I, so, so, so I just, I just want to point out, so you've, 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 been recognized for dance um with the halftime show you're recognized for acting in champions mm -hmm. and you are recognized for um this uh the, the this brand this this line of uh clothes that are going out there i mean you're really kind of spreading out and doing a lot of very creative things and it's it's really cool to see that um yeah, I know, right? Like, I can't think of no other ambassador who's ever done what I've done. Dance in the Super Bowl, um, yeah. the motion picture, and, of course, having a clothing design. Like, yeah. no one's ever done that like I've done, that I know about. Yeah, and um, I, I, I won't mention the movie name, but we were watching something yesterday, and um, the one of the lines was, was that, you know, um, you are an original. And um, th and 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 that's important that you are going where no one else has gone, and that uh, you don't necessarily have to wait for somebody to ask you to do it or to ask for permission. You just go and do it, and right. um, that that's that's really cool. That is uh, that that's that's awesome. Nat, again, I'm gonna ask, what are the things that you do that you find? in relation to Josh's work. <laughs> oh, 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 talking about um so so I actually um with my family friend in Austin, Texas, I actually have made my own sock with her. Yes. And as well as her, my own sock with her, I actually collaborated with our local um, MLS Next Pro team and have made our, well, made my own uh, soccer jersey and scarf. What What's really, what's really important about this though, is, is that you're using creativity and you're, you're, you're finding ways to um, not just put your messages out, but, but to, to, to do, um, Con really constructive work that um, is recognized in the community and helps grow, um, you know, career paths. Hopefully, so so. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, I'm I'm like a all around um, person who likes experiencing new things and just and I just I just happen to get recognized for it. Yeah, love that. I love that. Um, Nat, I think I'm going to leave the last question, the final final question to Natalie. Okay, Joshua, every time we end our podcast, we end it on this one. But what it what does inclusion mean to you? Well, inclusion what inclusion really means to me is to feel accepted and of course um gaining self confidence to not only be a leader for yourself, but to be both a leader and an advocate for those with intellectual or developmental disabilities or just regular peers as well to have them understand what inclusion really means in this world. That's awesome. That's a good one. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I really do love that. It's it it but but that idea about inclusion is really it, it it's really important. I think I, I think that the, the main thing is that we're talking about building um long longer relationships you know feeling valued and um those are those are very very good things I like that yeah okay um i i i think we've 
reached the the end of our question set, and it only took us uh, one and a half hours to do. <laughs> this is fun, uh, though. This is really fun. Oh, I'm glad you liked it. Uh, we we really enjoyed having you on, yeah. and I I I hope that we have a chance to meet in the future because yeah. you're you're a really good guy and. You're doing a lot of really, really good things. It's um, it, it it's 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 exciting. It really is. I I hope that we uh, get to see more of you and um, you know, any future endeavor that you do. Yeah. If you guys ever need help in Utah? I mean, I would love to fly out to help you all. Oh, oh thanks, yeah. Joshua. Be a speaker of the uh, of the event. We'll we'll hold, we'll we'll host a uh, best buddies event and we'll get you out here. Hopefully, we'll work. Yeah. With We'll bring Utah Jazz. Jazz. Yeah. Well, yeah, uh, I, I wear my I wear my Utah Jazz shirt. I got a Mitchell T-shirt. Oh, <laughs> I love it! I love it. Donovan Mitchell is amazing. He, yeah. Uh, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh wait, Donovan Mitchell was definitely a huge supporter of uh, Best Buddies and Special Olympics. I could yeah, tell you that's that. That's the T-shirt I got. That's, oh, yeah. so cool. that's awesome yeah well I, I it's it's a little vintage now but but um representing mitchell here would be awesome and <laughs> yeah yeah of course. A, lot awesome. of, a lot of love for that yeah all right well um i think with that uh we'll we'll go ahead and wrap it up um joshua felder thank you so much for being on the dad and nat podcast um seriously just really happy that you are uh you're here with us and you were sharing your message today Thank you so much. Thank you, I really Josh. Enjoyed it. Okay, stay safe. You too as well. Okay. Bye. Bye.